feeling lost. <laughs> I, I'm super lost. I think I got too many things until I feel like a bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Leap House channel. We are here for part two of our organization series. Okay, now it has unknowingly become a series, yeah. right? <laughs> so um, the first video of our kitchen uh, video was very well received. So now we are uh, doing a part two, which is our uh, ko komono, komono, yeah, which is miscellaneous, miscellaneous items. Then we are also packing our shelves that store our books and our toys. So if you are a parent watching this, I think you'll be very excited to know some tips that you can uh, help, like some tips to organize your uh, storage. So um, if you watch our tour, you will know that we have this very huge storage space here. It's um, I think this is one of our wisest decisions to actually build this because this becomes kind of like our daily thing. We store our books here, our toys here, and we also store some of the art materials here. What we clear out is the thing that we want to relocate, which is the um, what you call that? Toiletries. Toiletries. We somehow just shove all our toiletries below here and it was really taking up a lot of space. The current situation is that we cleared those out to relocate them to somewhere and we're going to reorganise this space. For books um, organisation, what we are going to do now is to um, split the books into reading and also uh, some of the books that are activities and also we will take a look at some of the age groups of uh, these books like uh, what age group they are suitable for so we can uh, split it as well and then um, you can also split it into languages if you like and yeah so we will we will do that first and if there are some books that are no longer suitable for the age group um, then we will we can donate them or give them away and then after that we we can determine the volume and then put it back on the shelf so that's what we are going to do right now buy like in advance or? I do. Okay. So that's so also there are things. Okay, all this like is never, is haven't reached Jonah's stage. Right? Okay. So put where? Okay. Oh. Put right on top, right? Uh, because haven't reached his stage. Yeah. So... Okay, wait. Okay. This is the right? uh, This is the So he used the eater now. So these popular boxes are what I got from Taobao. They are called popular boxes because most of the families in China, they use it to store their books. They are good for books that are sad. Like for example, Jonas is at the age where he reads a lot of readers' books. They are like, you know, help him to pick up learning and all that. So they come in like huge sets. So these are good to like categorize them yeah. together. Yeah, okay. So if you have the same uh, format of how you, um, you know, switch out the books or you pre-buy books uh, for your kids, uh, you can follow this method by buying the boxes. Alternatively, if you don't have that many books, uh, you can just also slot them into the shelves uh, as they are so that you can change it out. So it's really up to you whether you want to use storage or not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super lost. I think I got too many things until I feel like a, <laughs> like a bookstore. <laughs> okay, so if you have this, is what happen right when you are you are like a parent and you keep buying, you just want to, you know, you say, hey, wow, well, this person person A say person A say this book is good, and then they will just buy, keep buying. Yeah. yeah. So if you have um a lot of books and you are lost. It's a sign that you have too many books. So um, you can try to think about whether, like you know, are some of the resources that you use to um, 
teach your kids like uh, what are some of the resources that you like and that you find useful. And also, um, if your kid is above four years old, uh, you can also get them to pick out the books that they like and that will actually give you a sign of uh, what to keep and what you can let go of. Yeah, so uh, now that we have um, this amount of volume, uh, we will take some time to you know, really sort through each category by language, by type, activity, stories, and then we will see what we can put back into the shelves and then also what can be rotated uh, in the room. Yeah. Okay, so be right back. <laughs> so then. I don't know, I'm very lost. I just want to put everything into the container and shove it in. <laughs> Please don't do that because you will have a rebound. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, any more activities that we should put inside here? This is the art material. Stickers and art material. They will randomly appear here. Okay, you can set them aside. Yeah, colouring book. Pull one for here, right? Yeah. Actually, these are not activity books. It's just you, like. <laughs> By the. Um, so now, I can I pick out some books to display at Jonah's room first? Yeah, sure. Okay. That one, one. So while packing, I also pick out books that jo uh, Joel is interested. So he uh, recently we observed that he liked dinosaurs and animals kind of creatures. So I'm gonna pick out some of the books that is on animals yeah. and creatures and then uh, put it in a basket. So this this basket is our current basket, like current reads. So we always rotate around and then those that uh, that uh, we want to rotate out will go inside the story. Uh, go inside the shelves. Okay, and then you also have the ones for. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, Jonah's books, these are the books that I picked out to I wrote it out for him to read at this for this week. So like uh, it's National Day next week we have books about Singapore here and these are the current his current favourite books. Uh, the big ones are on top, the more beautiful ones and of course uh, I try to I try to limit the book so that he's focused on like which book to actually take and on this um, house shelves it's all his readers' books that uh, or that he's currently is at. Like we have the alphabet story books from Letterland. We also have um, I can I can read the first set. We also have um, Chinese. Like Chinese, we have this uh, Odonata set from Luca Reads. So these are actually the ones that Jonas uh, is reading now. Uh, this is the Oxford, Oxford Reading Tree. So for all these sets, one we put it on the house shelves here, so we can easily pick it out. And sometimes I'll just put one or two books on a tray on a table here, and then we will read it together in the morning or when he comes back from school. Let's do that. That's set. A bigger one. Then I want to clear out all this. Honestly, why is this bag so messy? Hmm. Oh, so because of Jonah's obsession with Paw Patrol, every time he goes into the bed, you know, we do a bedtime routine, and he wants to read bedtime story. He will take out this book. So what we do is we hide inside so that he don't see this. So it's out of the, out of everything, out of sight. So he will pick other books. <laughs> so while we are packing, you also find out new ways to store things. So we always thought that, you know, this activity corner should be at the side. But now we found a better way is like using these tubs from Ayuga. We just need to uh, put them here. So because I plan like what to do for Jonas, I usually put on a tray to uh, to let him explore the topic of the day. So I can easily uh, pick out the activity books from this um, tub here below and then uh, yeah depending on the things that we are exploring that day. Okay so 
for puzzles, uh, if you have a lot of puzzles uh, in these boxes and you only have a limited amount of space, you can actually transfer um, these puzzles into bags like that so that you can you know, just put it upright like that and then you can pick the ones that you want. So these will be bulkier and, and sometimes you know, after a while the boxes will be a bit like, loose so um, you know, when you slot it in, it might just uh, disintegrate or you know, everything will spill out. So yeah, this will be a good uh, tip that you can use uh, some storage bags. You can also use the zipper bags uh, from any bookstore that you can find to just yeah, organise this. And if you want to, you can also label it. Um, and if there's any instruction manual, you can also just slot it together. Yeah. Okay. You want to give me some bags or you want to just use this? Okay. So we got this rack to kind of like utilize the whole space. So we got this from Ayuga. So you can actually store sets below and also stack up on top like that. So we can also put this yep. like for example like that. So your blocks wouldn't get. Um, you can still visibly see where they are, and then you can maximize the space. Yeah. So these are actually for plates or like you can use them in the kitchen. But since um. This is kind of like a unique way of storing uh, the wooden toys. So uh, actually, this can be also used to maximize the height. How crazy it is that this just these shelves is even harder than our kitchen <laughs> organization. Okay. So to wrap things up, shall we go through like what are the things? Okay, okay sure. you wanna go through for yeah. our okay. our followers? Okay. Yeah. So um, we have segregated two parts of the um, cabinet. So this side uh, is like the art stuff. Okay, and then um, moving down, it will be some of the stationery and papers, and then. These are all the books, as well as some of the puzzles and also uh, yeah, some of the um, play items. Okay. So, um, these uh, organizers are a pretty good idea because we always get worksheets from um, Jonah's uh, school, like the things that he has done and all that, and sometimes we will need them for him to revise at home. So, I think the, uh, um, Esther came up with this idea where we got these uh, paper organizers yeah. from Ayuga. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because now we have like flame papers here and then here are all the rough papers where we get we let Jonas draw or practice writing mm -hmm. and then we also have some printables here for Jonas that I print out for him to do and these are the worksheets that are from school so that we can easily retrieve them and then of course here we have the stationaries we have uh, one whole box of stickers for Jonas whenever he uh, we want to reward him sometimes we let him pick the stickers we also have our quick card accessories here and then Esther, you want to share more about the books? yeah Oops. so for, <laughs> for the books we categorise three of these so these are actually all the series books that we uh, put into the boxes for the last one over here is all the uh, puzzles and you know uh, flash, the cards. flash cards as well so for this uh, second last uh, shelf we have put all the books um, from this side will be Chinese and then this side is English. Uh, we didn't use the box, uh, these kind of boxes for this section because uh, it's actually uh, these are board books and then they can actually stand on their own. So we decided to just put them this way and you can actually see the titles uh, easily and you can just switch them out uh, as uh, Fairy does the toy uh, and books rotation. And for the last um, shelf, we actually uh, utilize these um, Ayuga boxes. Uh, they come with the lid but um, I think you can decide to use them or not. So for these two that we uh, didn't use the lid, um, these are like uh, activity books. Uh, the lid I put them below so that in case you want to switch it out and you can find the lid again. This section here which has all the activity books that are uh, above Jonah's standard now as in because we 
uh, Jonas is learning how to read and write currently so we have those sets of readers books that are you know level 2, 3, 4, 5 so we put it in the bucket here because we, we will only eat uh, do level 2 when, when we finish level yeah. 1 right yeah so basically uh, we put it in the bucket here and then those visibly one is when uh, we would like Jonas to pick up his book or uh, he want to switch it out or we want Joel to see the books or you know these are the visibly clear ones where we rotate out into our uh, our bedroom yeah so as you can see over here, we clear out a lot of things. I actually um, chose to destash some of uh, our toys away. I'm either going to donate away or I'm going to destash away on carousel. We have our, some of our uh, learning toys here. We have a lot of shape sorter, wooden toys and uh, some sensory play stuff here. And we also have a light board here, the learning light board and uh, all those um, big sets of learning materials and then coming coming down here we have actually switched up the kids uh, paint and some of the crafty stuff for the kids to play all over here so it's we, I can easily reach out they, in Jon for Jonas height now she, he cannot reach himself here mm -hmm. so it, I still have to take it for, for them and usually I choose the paint and then do an invitation to play set up for him when he comes back from, from school and then of course um, these are these are uh, storage they call it the brick storage yeah. they go storage from uh, Ayuga too so these uh, I use it to contain things like buttons loose parts that um, we use them for crafting sometimes Jonas we will just pick some um, buttons for him to do some crafting so over here you can also see that we have color rubber bands uh, some pipe cleaners all these are great for sensory play and crafting too we also have pom poms so i'm 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 a fan of playing uh, learning through play la. Yeah. so basically these materials are very useful for me sometimes i just have an idea i just quickly go and retrieve them and then do a uh, invitation to play set up then we also have um, magnetic plastic coins natural stones so these stones are actually quite good for uh, literacy sometimes we just um, ask get them to do some um, pointing work and all that with uh, these stones and all that sometimes we also use these stones for like uh, play dough like small world play and things like that so uh, since uh, Perry uses all these uh, sensory play items regularly uh, previously they were on the other side and actually also on a higher shelf uh, it's going to be hard for her to reach so um, we decided to move them down to this shelf and also uh, yeah, so that it's at eye level where she can reach them. Yeah, so it's easier for me to retrieve them. So coming down, we have our puzzles that are here and then uh, of course more puzzles here and a lot of loose parts here which we contain in this kind of loose, loose parts acrylic jar. So these are acrylic so it does, it's, it's good in a sense that if the kid's going to drop this, it's not going to smash it. La. And then these are from Earn Stories. So I use them to store like alphabet coins and uh, numbers. Uh, these are from Treasures by Jennifer. And then going down, uh, we have this um, storages boxes, like frosted uh, storages boxes. They are stackable. Uh, these are from Ayuga too. And then we use them to uh, store uh, other loose parts. Like uh, because I, for me personally, I like to paint toys for my kids. So these are like the things I painted for them, like the stackable fish and uh, yeah, and those jigsaw trees. So I sorted them out with these are the painted ones that sometimes I still do use them for uh, play and then. We also have, uh, I also set up this box where it's not painted one so I can paint them with Jonas. And here have, we have um, the silicon, silicon toys uh, for Joel to play. These are from Carabel Plays. So they are very useful. I sometimes just throw it into the bathtub for Joel to play. And sometimes Jonas also stack them and use them for play pretend, right? Like they are the cupcakes you pick, is it? And lastly, we have our last shelves here, which are all our uh, 
a medium to large size yeah. uh, bricks. Uh, they are not the largest that we have. We store the largest one uh, over at the other side, yeah. which we will uh, show you yeah. guys later. But here are the medium sets. Uh, we love wooden toys and we uh, Jonas has developed an interest to build ball run. So we have the different parts to build ball run. And then uh, what we have very special here is Esther did uh, this rack over here where you can actually stack things up. We are go definitely going to get more of these so that we maximize the, the space here. Yeah. So if you have um, you know toys at home that you want to organize and you want to do toy rotation like what Furry does, uh, you can utilize like any space like these shelves that you have in your home. Um, and you know before you actually you know purchase any of the storage items, just make sure that we take everything out first, like just like what we did just now. Um, and then after that, you'll be able to see um, you know like which shelf uh, can um, store which items. And because um, if you are the one that's going to be uh, switching out all these items, think about um, what are some of the items that you want to keep at eye level. So I would say that this these two shelves are kind of like your prime uh, real estate. So put things that you easily uh, take and use on these levels. And then uh, things that you might not really use as often, you can store them below or, or on the top. Yeah. So yeah, so if you have any um, yeah, toys that you want to organize and even just miscellaneous items in general. Uh, you can do what we, we did earlier, so just take everything out and then uh, just run through, do a joy check, take out what you want to keep and then the rest that you want to throw and then we will we can decide on storage and then put them back so that uh, you, can, you can take what you want. And the last step will be to uh, do some labeling. So since there are many different uh, boxes and um, trays and all that, uh, you can use uh, any labels that you have to, to label them so that you know um, where are the items and if there's other people living with you at home, uh, they can also help you to do that. Yeah. So previously, I stored these art materials in here but uh, I realised the usability is not very high. Like Jonas don't really go and uh, use them unless I take it out for him and set it out on the table. So what I did is, uh, previously this little trolley from IKEA was to store diapers. Joelle's diapers but we switch it out into a basket so this is the basket that we switch it out so currently because he grew up already he also yeah. don't need so many creams and um, you know uh, little things so yeah. we switch it out to a basket like yeah. that and put it at the side of our sofa and then uh, it's more it's more less space take up less space yeah. la. and then this trolley we actually change it into like an art cart for Jonas, it has his pencil case and his art materials where he can use. We also have some chops for him, and we also have some play doh because he really enjoys playing uh, uh, those sensory yeah. play. So this cut is usually at his room on beside his table, so they can actually uh, get crafty and um, do many yeah. activities by themselves. So if you have a lot of papers uh, from your kids, like artwork in general so you can actually use a clear folder like this to put the artwork inside and you'll be able to flip through them and you know uh, store them nicely as well instead of uh, you no know, throwing them into the box or, or any kind of um, other uh, slots you know at the corner so this way um, your kids can also learn to appreciate the papers uh, and the art that they have um, done and then if you have like a display board or something you can also take them out occasionally to you know like display it and yeah have your kids be more independent and you know slot them in as well yeah so lastly we have our big bricks that uh, that, that we are storing here just below the this island here so previous uh previously we shared that uh, we have bigger sets of wooden toys these are the sets that we have and we usually only display one set each time at our playroom so we store it here so by uh, like periodically we will change it and rotate it and then I feel that when we when we design this space we actually deliberately make this so that we have space for these big bricks yeah so for those mummies who are like me who love wooden toys you can also consider like a space like that to store your big big uh, items big wooden toys so we've come to the end of this video. It's been a long day. Yeah. We started at about 2 p.m. and now it's about 8 p.m. already. And it's just storage for these shelves. Thank you, Esther, for coming no to problem. help again. Uh, we actually just want to do this so that uh, we have like a systematic yeah. 
uh, uh, organization at home yep. so that we don't anyhow buy things we we check what we have already yeah. also and then as you can see we are not done yet look at the mess here so these are actually the items that I want to bless away or stash it away uh, or donate away so uh, we need to it's, they are all not going to go in so they are all pending softing and uh, throwing recycling uh, we are going to carry it to Tampanese Hub where Tampanese Hub there's also a place where you can donate packaging and things like that and, yeah. and some of these toys and books that are brand new are going to uh, be donated to other low-income families so basically um, yeah so we this is the end of our video yeah. even though it's not really completed so we're going to complete it by tonight so uh, thank you so much for watching if you have any questions for Esther do leave down in the comments below she will try her best to yeah, <laughs> reply so I think the, the Komari method is very tailored to your lifestyle so because Fari is interested in you know like toy rotation art stuff and you know all the yeah. different kind of activities like what we have done today is really uh, curated for her and if you have you know other um, things that you do at home that you want me to take a look feel free to yeah. book a consultation with me as well yeah, 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 yeah be yeah. happy to chat with you yeah, actually yeah. I feel that it really it really works. You can actually uh, talk to Esther yeah. about this because currently oh yeah, congrats that you are the bronze uh Thank what you, uh, consultant. Bronze consultant because you know for Mary Kondo uh yeah, the, consultants, yeah. right, it's by the level yeah. and uh, it equates to like the number of hours you have helped. Yeah, so, so she has actually helped how many hours really? Yeah, it's uh so for bronze level it means that I've actually helped uh like my clients and it's total of 150 hours so wow. I really want to continue this journey yeah. so yeah I, I want to you know really help you guys yeah, and, and, so and solve your um, yeah, lifestyle needs basically yeah so I feel that it's really important especially when you have kids you hoard a lot of things <laughs> I totally understand that. So if you need somebody to give you that push, to give you some advice, do check it out. Do uh, contact Esther at Your Tidy Half. Okay, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>